Hello and welcome back, everyone. We are joined for a very special broadcast with Xavier Ral, friend of the channel, and I'm honoured to say my friend as well now. Xavier, it's great to have you back. Thank you for giving us your precious time as always. How are you? Oh, it's always a privilege to come on your channel. Always a pleasure. How are you, Mark? Yes, very good. A little tired as after a lovely pilgrimage at Medjugorje, I'm back and back in the so-called rat race, <laughs> busy and, and work and everything else. But of course, we're speaking today because more heightened uh, events are happening in the world. Of course, we're speaking about Iran launching uh, over about 300 attack drones and missiles over the past 24 hours on Israel. And of course, the, the internet, the media, everyone's covering it, as this is further bringing escalation into that region. And of course, further escalation, perhaps, into what may be coming next. And it comes to no surprise for you or for me, or many others that are aware of very many prophecies that are on repeat regarding the nations, regarding the events, regarding even the year, which I know we've discussed in previous videos. So what could you tell us in terms of this attack and in the context of the prophecies? Why are you not surprised? Well, I, like you, you and I, we had many chats before this happened. We, in behind the, the camera, of course. So um, uh, as you will know, um, we are not, neither you or I are surprised because we were actually talking for the past few months when is the big, big clash going to take place since we knew it was foretold first and foremost by Marie-Julie Jeanne, um in her prophecies when she mentioned that the famous prophecy about uh, the English, uh, Jerusalem and Persia coming at a major clash um, one against the other. So we've just seen the exactitude of yet another prophecy of Marie-Julie Jeanne becoming a reality. And this happening after the fall of a English queen uh, in, the, in, in the nation of Great Britain. So this is exactly, once again, uh, what is happening. So this is one thing. Uh, for also at the same time, uh, you and I, we did discuss, you'll remember, about the conversation and the prophecies that were echoed by Father Michel Rodrigue, another prophecy which came exactly as he foretold. And this, uh, I've, since I've known him for over a year now, a year almost and a few months, uh, he did always mention that the war will not, the Third World War will not take, will not start from Russia, uh, but it will start from Iran and North Korea. So, and uh, the situation being what it is, this war, uh, this attack that Iran just uh, initiated against Israel as a response to the bombing of the Israeli um, consulate in Damascus, uh, also was, um, was not a surprise. The attack on the Damascus consulate uh, was due because of the proxy war that Iran is inflicting upon Israel through Hamas, and Hezbollah, no. So all this is not really most any surprise on our part. The only thing is, if we are to believe a prophecy, then we better brace for uh, North Korea now, that is due now to supposedly act as well. And what, as a Frenchman, what uh, per perturbs me is the reaction that Russia and China are going to take in regards to a potential retaliation of not merely Israel against Iran, but of the United States. For Iran has developed very, very tight diplomatic and economic uh, ties with both China and Russia. Mm. I don't know what you think, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Watching the, the TV very late last night when the headlines were coming up, like we're actually watching the news live and they're telling us these drones, these missiles are in flight right now and they're expected to arrive over Israel within the next 30 minutes or within the next hour when we're watching it live. And we're like, my goodness, this is actually happening. And 
First thing straight away, and I've been saying this to a few friends on the text messages, sending the timeline video, I'm like, we're literally seeing Catholic prophecy unfold before our eyes. Not just the countries, not just the events, but also the time, the year. And just to be more uh, uh, clear on what you were saying there with the Queen and all that, that great quote that you give in your book, Revelations, as well as what we've covered on the channel before, Marie Julie Jehenia, the Lord says to her about the years 80 to 83. Now, your theory is you add those numbers onto the year of her death of 1941, it brings you to uh, 20, 21 to 2024. And, well, what's the chances that the, mo the longest ever reigning Queen of England happened to pass in this time period, conveniently coming at the four popes of Garib and Dal, conveniently coming at the time of the two, two popes and everything else that's on that video. And I, I think that that's the one I'm sharing to people. I say, look at the context here, but it's all fitting in the time frame of these few years. And if you're, you've says as well, you have you were saying even last year that you found you believe that 2024 will be a pivotal year. And I very much believe 2024 into 2025, we're going to see a lot more. And I'm not worried about it, especially after my pilgrimage to Medjugorje. I'm still coming back with the peace and the graces that's received there. And that's the most important thing for us all, is the fact mm -hmm. that everything is happening in a way that things are starting to crumble to the point where God is still coming forth with love, still coming forth with mercy. This is still the time of conversion. And we're seeing the Hollywood crumbling with a lot of stuff recently and certain stars getting charged with sex trafficking and all the rest of it. More things coming out in videos I'm noticing about all the Satanism and selling souls over. Then at the same time, we're starting to see all this in the land where Jesus himself walked, performed his miracles, and he's given us some great visionaries, chosen souls, such as Marie, Julie, Jehenny and others, where everything's coming true to the letter. And any atheist, anyone with, with rationale must look at this and say, how are so many things fitting together for now? And for me, the icing on the cake that we came with straight away is the fact that the UK, Iran... In Israel, that relationship, diplomacy is all starting to break apart after the the death of the long reigning Queen of England. And you can't you can't make that up. It's absolutely the eyebrow raiser for me. And then of course watching Iran last night, uh launching that attack, I believe they, they were keeping themselves right, maybe. And this is why I wonder how much we believe with our own leaders and all the diplomacy and the news articles, because Apparently, Iran put it to the UN Council, quote in Article 51, that there would be a retaliation because of the attack in Damascus. And they believe this one-off attack is their objective, has been completed. But we have to wait and see what Israel's going to do now. Where's America going to come in? Because we're already seeing the standoff in the Red Sea with Russia now, aren't we, with the Navy fleets? North Korea exactly. seems to... North Korea's quiet just now. But he'll take a, a chance at it. And we know with the confidence of Iran to do this, th th I don't believe they would do that unless they are absolutely confident that China and Russia are there to back them up. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. They really, if they were, if they would have been alone or if they felt they were totally alone, it would have been an overwhelming risk. It would be literally throwing the dice, as, as the Americans say. But here on ABC and NBC, uh, the American news is are stating that um, Biden, uh, President Biden, has advised Netanyahu not to retaliate militarily, but uh, to simply uh, act uh, against the, uh, the Hezbollah and Hamas to a certain degree, but to show restraint, because otherwise this could escalate to something higher. It appears that uh, Netanyahu's answer was to turn down <laughs> President Biden's advice and said, we will retaliate. And he supposedly, supposedly uh, would, would have said, if the United States were ever attacked like we were, would the United States 
show restraint? That's the question that supposedly he has, has asked uh, President Biden, who remains silent. So it seems that he turned down the recommendation of the United States, and he will respond, according to the American news, within 48 hours. The French news, C News, uh, BFM TV, and France 24 are also saying that uh, it is expected that uh, Israel will respond uh, either through bombing of nuclear plants and uh, energy um, centers, uh, also by um, uh, attacking some uh, Iranian ports and also eliminating some uh, Hezbollah and Hamas leaders uh, in positions that they are aware of, in whereabouts which they are quite familiar uh, as to their locations. We shall see. I don't think we'll have to wait very long before we know exactly what Israel intends to do. As I said, what preoccupies me is the, the um, position that the United States, the English and the French will adopt and the response of uh, Russia and China. This has the potential of something quite great. The only thing, and I'll finish with this, uh, the only thing that... Uh, comes to mind, though, is uh, Father Michel very clearly uh, mentioned that before the Third World War officially starts, you know, there will be first the warning that uh, Conchita Gonzalez and Garabandal has talked to, uh, and Marie Julie Jeannie has mentioned in uh, her writings. So then about 42 days later, then the, uh, the Third World conflict will officially begin. So if that's the case, Marie-Julie um, uh, prophecy, as you mentioned, year 80 to 83. And there is another one where the, the year 84 is mentioned as well, where it's going to be of utmost gravité. It seems that uh, we are perfectly in line with what has been predicted. Yeah, for concerning. sure. Can, can you just clarify about those 42 days that you mentioned there, Xavier? I haven't yes. heard before. Father Michel said that... Uh, there will be the, this illumination of this new Pentecost. You no, know? a lot of other American podcasts talk about uh, the illumination of consciences. There was a formula that came originally from Father Michel Rodrigue, which was caught by the people who were working with him at the time. Uh, so it appears that when uh, this event takes place, you no, know, when every human being around the world will go through a revision of their own, uh, an audit, shall we say of their own life, of their own soul, the way God sees it himself, then there will be six weeks or 42 days, uh, whereas uh, it will be decreed that the devil will literally be tied. Mm -hmm. In other words, man will still be free to choose between good and evil, no, between good or evil, rather, uh, but all his minions, all his works, will not be able to operate normally with the same vehemence or strength as before. This will be a time given especially to humanity for them to have a chance to convert. Truly. It will be a time, according to Father Michel, uh, he was told that there will be endless lines, like in Medjugorje, where you just returned from, endless lines of uh, Catholic and non-Catholics alike who will ask to be confession, confessed, rather, you know, and to be baptized and to go to church and so on and so forth. After 42 days, Father Michel was told, then um, the devil will be released and he will do all his works and work for people's uh, minds and consciences, particularly through the scientific community who will be backed up by the geopolitical parties of the world. Mm -hmm. And they will try to explain that uh, it was mass uh, hallucination that was caused due to one of the largest uh, solar storms ever recorded in history. And it will affect even, it, it, they will prove that it has affected even satellites and so on and so forth. So at that time, immediately after the 42 days are over, according to Father Michel, Father Michel was told by God, the, the Eternal Father, at that time, people will, the great majority of the people will find, will withdraw again, uh, unless they decide to really convert from the heart. They will somewhat withdraw, certain part will withdraw from their newly found conversion, from their, shall we say, their 
walk their path towards Damas, as we say in French. No? They will withdraw from that. They will become blind again. And the third world conflict, conflict will start. But it will be at that time, at the same time after 42 days, where those who will have said yes to Christ through the new Pentecost, the warning, will then be called to either stay in their homes, which they would have consecrated, their temporary refuges, or to move into larger refuges that, that will be permanent ones. So, after 42 days, various things will happen. People will be convinced that this was mass hallucination, due principally to solar flares. The Third World War will officially start, and all those who will have remained firm in their faith, in their conversion, will be called to go to permanent refuges around the world. That, I hope, answers your question. Yeah, it's just the 42 days through me, but I remember about the six weeks rest bite after the warning that he mentioned. That's what it was. Um, I know with Garabandal, of course, though, when the warning comes, as Mario Loli says, everything will be at its worst. But the one thing that many people hold on to with Garabandal is the Pope going to Moscow, returning from Moscow, things... Mm -hmm. I remember reading off memory that he will go to bring about a sense of peace or calm. And I think that's what's very pressing here is there's a great reason more than ever for him to go. And it's only going to get worse in the world, which was going to make him all the more needed to step in as a sign of peace. He's the only world leader in the, in the world that's got nothing to gain from war just as there's nothing but everything to gain from peace. And this war machine that's underway with the corrupt establishments and everything else, we know it's happening now, but it wouldn't have been happening with Trump. But I'll leave that for another day. But as we're coming closer to the election in America in November, I think this is why many other things are going to heat up as well for that overwhelming majority that are established in these nations to bring all this about. But if the Pope go, I think, I know we had unconfirmed reports, I did a quick video on it, and then I did the update last month saying that the Vatican says the Pope has no plans to go to Moscow. I've had uh, some famous uh, one or two people writing to me thinking it's still imminent, even the fact that it's been denied right now, because there has to be a reason where he's going to get in there and bring about a sense of calm before it really is the state of Armageddon in the world. But as the prophecy says with Garib and Dal, shortly after his return from Moscow, everything erupts. And this is before the warning. We're going through a tribulation. Then that's mm -hmm. when God steps in, and then that's when everything is halted you know, the evil that's spread and taken over humanity is going to be stopped by God stepping in. And that's where we'll have the conversions. That's where things will start to, to change for at least the six weeks, as you said. But yeah, it comes to the point, those that are firm in their faith. And I really believe that's why our Blessed Mother has been staying so long through Medjugorje, as well as other places. She's preparing us to really have the Lord living in our lives the way it's supposed to be, the way Jesus prayed for it in John chapter 17, infused in the Trinitarian life. And what better gift may be than that suffering? Maybe that martyrdom. And I'm not saying that to frighten anyone. I think when fear comes into it, it's a sign of less confidence in God maybe more submission to his will that might be needed on our journey. And that's why we have to keep loving the messages. But um, it's just a case, I know we're not here to guess anything, but one does wonder how long left until this visit to Moscow or until this warning. Next year's a great jubilee, as we know. But then again, do we go with even years like something else has been mentioned? Or it always seems to be third party sources. So before I go off on a tangent, it's just like, what else is there to witness in the world before things start to change for the better? Well, I think that um, there is another factor that gives us an idea on the timeline of things. Conchita Gonzalez, while she talked about this particular trip of the Pope going to Moscow, mentioned also it would be during the time of a great synod. No? This synod of synodality, Let's not forget, it's supposed to come to a close in October of this year, 2024. 
So I would like to bring to, to the attention of your viewers that you were the first one, the very, very, very first podcast host who came up with that uh, uh, rumor, which I believe was well-founded. I spoke with my good friend, John Henry, John Henry Weston, who also has somebody who is constantly in Moscow uh, to find out, to keep an eye as to the uh, rumors that spread about the Pope eventually going to Moscow. He told me that he had the same thing as you did, the rumor about the Pope going to Moscow. The Vatican is not going to open um, widely or publicly their plans for that sort of thing, because it would uh, immediately, as the Americans say, open a new can of worms. Uh, in view of the fact that the Vatican is so bombarded with diplomatic uh, representatives from the European Union and the United States not to show any uh, initiative on the diplomatic front since, let's not forget, there is no diplomatic front on the side of the United States or the European Union. Nobody is trying to find a solution, a peaceful one that is, except the Pope. So I do believe that what you came up with information-wise was nothing short of brilliant, and I think it was well found. So if we are to believe um, a combination of the prophecies brought forth by Conchita Gonzalez, that the Pope will go to Moscow in the course, and this during the course of a, a great synod, no? this would mean sometimes, it would have to be sometimes this year. It also concludes as well, and it's in perfect synchronity with the prophecies of Marie-Julie Jeanne, the year 8 and 84. 83, rather. 83 being, if our theory is correct, 2024. This is this year. And yes, according to Conchita Gonzalez, the Pope will return from Moscow. He's still in between his legs in sheer fiasco. And it will be upon his return to Rome that a new conflict elsewhere in Europe will start. Again, you don't have to look very far. Mm -hmm. Today, we all here, I'm certain in London where you are, and in France and in the States, uh, that there are tensions, very grave uh, tensions between Kosovo and Bosnia. They're yeah. already putting some military units on the border. Bosnia will not tolerate uh, that um, to see Kosovo become an independent, uh, auto-determinated uh, nation. They will not. And Bosnia is already supported diplomatically by the Russians, while Kosovo is diplomatically supported by NATO. So, it, it's like different pieces of puzzle from Marie-Julie Jeanne, Conchita Gonzalez, and Reverend Father Michel Rodrigue. Um, their prophecies match to perfection, don't you think, Mark? Yeah, and I just think when you mentioned Bosnia, well, that's where Our Lady decided to appear for the past 40 odd years as well. You know, so, but she's there for all her children, and that's everyone Kosovo, Bosnian, Russian. American, whoever, and um, I, I think I, I, there's so much happening right now that one needs to keep a calmness about it, not to get too sensationalist and things, and I know at times that can be quite impacting, like that unconfirmed report with the Pope going to Moscow and things. I mean, there was a moment of excitement, we had to keep it together, but excitement might not be the right word, because we know what's to follow. Um but I think you're starting to see it must be something in a spiritual realm. I wonder if exorcists let's speak about things like demons of nations and that, you know, Father Chad Ripperger or something. I wonder when you start seeing things that what came around comes back. It's coming around again, like the Bosnian War and all that, the Yuka, former Yugoslavia, Kosovo. These are the childhood names I remember on the news growing up with war. And it's a, someone says, when are we going to keep stop this cycle of Iran and Israel, Israel and Palestine? Well, I would say we're not in a new cycle of this. We're actually an exponential thing because Iran has finally launched over 300 attack drones and missiles to Israel within the last 24 hours. I don't recall mm -hmm. that happening since I was born in the 1980s. It's happening now and it's fitting perfectly with the prophetic timeline. And, um, yeah, it's just a case of hoping that the fact that people are starting to heed the call. I see some good news in that, maybe flipping the coin side. There were more baptisms into the Catholic Church in France this Easter than ever recorded. 
without mm-hmm. that. And was, so God is always in the silence. The gentle whisper in the cave, like Elijah, wasn't in the storm or the earthquake. It was in the whisper, a gentle breeze. That God doesn't need to prove himself to any of us, to the devil or nothing in creation. He's almighty God. And that gentle spirit is still moving and winning souls, which we won't get in the TV. We're getting the anger of evil. We're getting the malice, the corruption, and that sin. And yet look at the balancing act, at least with France, because that reminds me, the other part of marie Julie Jeheni's prophecy in that timeline with the Queen passing, Iran, UK and Israel relationships breaking up with the new sovereigns timeline, it's also the mass migration that was an issue in Europe. And the, at the back of my mind, it's the worry of with Iran going into it, because I think of any nation over in the Middle East, it would be Iran that could somehow call up jihad or something. And I don't know enough about it, but speaking to a Muslim friend a couple of weeks ago, he says there's so many parameters and rules that have to be in place for anyone to declare jihad, but what that would mean if it was. And I think the way the Iran regime is set up right now with such a faith-based frontier government, it would probably be them before it would be the other nations that have been used to the war for 20-odd years. And what does that mean for all these migrants coming in to foreign lands of Europe where their motherland and others nearby might be declaring jihad on the very countries that are hosting them now? I I do not happen to share the notion that certain so many points would have to be met for jihad to be declared in a country like mine, where I, I also grew up, went to school and college with uh, fellow Muslims, but no, I'm not Muslim, but fellow students that happen to be Muslims from Syria, Chad, Lebanon, and so on and so forth. I know that a lot of these immigrants that come to our shores, England as well, I do not have a, do not receive such a heavy or profound religious formation or upbringing. They know the prince, the basics, the principles. And I can tell you this, um, particularly the newer generations, those that are, that are sons or grandsons of um, fathers and grandfathers who arrived here uh, just after the liberation of and the autodetermination and independence of their countries of origins, they, they do not forgive the English or the French for the humiliation of the colonization era. They have a, they arrive or they grow up with a certain complex and with a feeling of revenge in which they want to replace. They want to replace the rules of our uh, institutions, of our governments, to be replaced by the Sharia. I don't know if I told you this brief anecdote. Uh, recently, when I just came back from Paris, um, I was working in the Champs Elysees. Uh, I was in a business um, travel, no, with an American. And this American fellow was looking around, took him to the Champs Elysees because it's very folkloric, of course, very touristy. We went walking, seeing the glorious Arc de Triomphe, and I was looking around, and I was wondering why is he not looking at the Arc de Triomphe or the beautiful place? And he told me, Xavier, are you sure that we haven't taken the wrong plane and we're not in Dubai? Told him, no, of course not. He started laughing. And then we saw a group of possibly, must have been Mark, blimey, perhaps 11 or 12 young fellows. They were obviously of Arabic descent and all wearing the same T-shirt. No? It was a map of France, you know, green background, green being the color of Islam, with a woman in chador, no, covered her face half. And there was something stated in Arabic and something above in French, in translation, I assume, saying, France, the hereditary enemy of Islam. If you cannot conquer it, convert it. Mm. No? And in the back, two huge Muslims' swords crossed, crossing in the back of the shed. If this is not a provocation or a reflection of a certain mentality of things, I do not know what it is. But I can tell you that right now, um, 
only about my country since I keep up every day with my country. Yesterday I had a, a two hour long interview with a French host. I can tell you that the tensions is at its zenith. We have uh, attacks, murders from Muslim killing Muslims that are adapting to well to the French society that are not dressed dress in the traditional habab, shibab or chador, but as they say, the French way. Mm. They're being killed by their fellow Muslims or Frenchmen, uh, boys, children that are being hit and killed just with fists or with knives every single solitary day. It's not a question of uh, bringing fear or bringing uh, gloom and doom all the time. It's a question that I agree with you. We have to be very grateful to God to be able to be, or rather, to be placed in the circles where all these things that are being hidden is being exposed through you, through other, other podcast hosts for one purpose, to remain calm and to act with this. Continuous prayer. Mass, I know you're about to go yourself shortly to Holy Mass. I'll ask you to, to go and pray for all of us uh, while you go there. But that's the purpose of this whole thing. God wishes these messages to be spread. And you, among others, are doing exactly that. You are fulfilling the task, the mission, that as a Scottish chevalier you're being given, and you're doing it admirably so. And what I love about what you do, Mark, you do it always with a with kindness, with a call to peace, to calmness, to rationality, and serenity. That's exactly what we are supposed to do. For any other feeling, it's not inspired by God. I think you'll agree with me, but by the enemy. So with calmness, let's also sort of observe, let us pray in union, and, and let's prepare. Yeah, and that's the key word, I believe, and that's why I even took the name years ago when I first set up the channel, thinking of the preparing, and uh, it was prophecy prepper. <laughs> but of course, I've changed it since my visit to Medjugorje in August. I feel the Blessed Mother, you know, time to change if you want to focus on uh, the preparing spiritual side of things. So I do, I think that's a very key word to prepare. It's not preparing just to flee to the hills or have your food rations and all this is preparing your heart because i remember years ago having knots in my stomach when i first read some of these prophecies the fear that fear isn't there anymore maybe I've, it's either i've been desensitized to it because of the repetition of reading and talking about it or it's because i started to love the messages i fell in love with god allow the holy spirit to lead me and the more you're in love with God, the more you're pleading, hurry <laughs> up and come. Hurry up, sort this mess, bring us all back in. And we have a great glorious hope that those who are opposed to the faith may actually find in the way that their uniqueness is that God's created them for good. They can bring that courage around for God. If they can bring around that defence for God rather than the opposite. Like St. Paul at Damascus. You know, we see that's why Iran has hit Israel is because of the strike in Damascus. Well, let's hope they all have their epiphany moment. Let's hope they all have a, a conversion experience where the Lord does step in for them just as they did for Saul on the road to Damascus. And uh, there's so much more we could cover with it, Xavier, but I just want to say... if you. I was going to do a video separate maybe when we saw these Hollywood elites starting to have all their houses raided and the internet's lit up with all these videos of all the crimes. I, I did have an ex-Satanist high wizard on a month or two ago, Zachary King, an eye-opener into that satanic world. These celebrities, these famous people we go and pay to see at concerts, watch their movies... There's so many things in the demonic lifestyle that they have signed themselves over to the demonic in order for fame and fortune. If we knew the reality of what was truly going on in the world in that way, we, we couldn't handle it. And when you're starting to see Sound of Freedom movies, when you're starting to see everything about Jeffrey Epstein Island, about these uh, Hollywood rappers and other celebrities starting to get in the whirlwind, Things are start. I see that as a good sign that the bad, the evil, 
things are starting to crumble. And then we see France bringing in more converts. We're seeing more messages being spread of the faith. People are starting to catch on. There are right-wing commentators, as they're called, here in the UK, and I dare say in every country, where they're highlighting these things of concern. The only thing maybe missing is the faith, the point of faith. And I think you and I, God, have put together, God has put together, as well as our friends doing the same thing. And I sense now there's yes. going to be a more of a unification across the pond, uh, hopefully across Europe and the world, where we're all coming together, bringing that ingredient that these other good people need is their faith, the faith. Because people are starting to catch on to a lot of things now that they know something isn't right, something's coming that's just not right. And who's asking for this? The majority of humanity don't ask for this. They don't go looking for all these bad things. That's where the illumination of conscience has to step in. And I think we will truly see more conversions than ever, as our Blessed Mother said. So if you want to on that note to give us the final word of encouragement or hope or uh, as well as finish maybe with a short prayer. Yeah, no, I'll simply finish as far as encouragement is concerned uh, to unite all together with the prayer of the Holy Rosary, perhaps to make one tonight all to, all those of us who watch, to do it all in union with one another, to continue to pray for Mark, for him to continue his mission. His mission is very, very special and uh, hand-chosen I believe by the by heaven to fulfill the task of bringing forth that which so many do not. So let us pray for Mark, for his lovely wife, for his uh, ongoing mission, and let's pray. What do you say if we pray? And now, Father, Hail Mary in uh, in Latin. Would that be all right? If you'd like to lead it, my Latin's a little rusty since um... <laughs> or in English, if you prefer. Unless you want, I'm happy for you to do the Latin if you wish. Aye, okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Yeah. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, secut in cielo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum, da nobis odie, E dimite nobis debita nostra, secut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris. Et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, in as the it was, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, you to everyone. Again. Pleasure as always, mon ami. <laughs> Likewise, laddie. Always a pleasure, I say. Excellent. Until next time, everyone, keep the faith, keep growing strong, like, subscribe, share, and if you haven't got the book already, it's the best book out there for all that stuff with the revelation <laughs> prophecy. Get Xavier's book, Revelations, The Hidden Secret Messages and Prophecies of the Blessed Virgin Mary on Amazon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. God bless. Until next time. Bye. Till next time.